Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to look at very interesting actuators from Hebe Robotics. I have three actuators here for the test. X816, X89 and R83. As you can immediately see, all these actuators have hello shaft. Like this, you can easily pass the cable through it. Also, I have some brackets here, so like this we can construct something with it. Actually, this is one of the nice features of these actuators that you have all the accessories in order to construct different robots. So basically, if you have money, you can buy a lot of pieces like this and construct uh, legged robots or robotic arm or whatever you want. Another nice feature about this actuator is that it's very easy to connect. You don't need any additional electronics. All you need is to connect the power, connect it to your local network, and afterwards any computer which is connected to the same network can control this actuator. All these actuators have cross-roller bearing on the output shaft, like this output shaft can take loads in different directions. Also, these actuators have the position sensor on the output shaft. Yeah, and this is uh, what is called elastic series actuator, meaning that they have a special spring inside or elastic element inside. And with this, they can measure the torque very precisely. And they need to do this because they have a really high gear ratio. They have a tiny small motor over here and the gear ratio, I think, around 100 or even more than 100. And because of this high gear ratio and uh, gear train with several gears, they have a backlash, quite a noticeable backlash. Here I have the three actuators with the different parameters. This one is powerful and slow. This is, is fast and uh, less powerful and this one is in the middle. And here are some essential parameters about these actuators. Just a couple of words about why I'm doing this video. And for me, the main purpose of this video is to learn. Because this company, Hebe Robotics, they have a really nice track record. They built a lot of robots using these actuators. And these robots are working properly. They sell these robots, they're making money with them. And so I would like to look at the actuators, find out what is good, what is bad, what is really nice, and see what we can implement in our DIY robot arm in our DIY actuators. So our main purpose is to learn here. Let's continue. So actuator we're going to fix to this bracket and the bracket goes here. We need to supply the 48 volts power. There is also this power distribution board. And power on. Ooh, different lights here. Green looks nice. Probably this means everything is okay. Now let's run scope. This is a program from Hebe Robotics. And uh, we see this one. Cool. This was fast and easy. Over here there is a temperatures, uh, electronics, motor winding. And we can see all the positions over here. Gains, which includes the position limit, velocity limit, torque limit, effort is the torque. So let's go to monitoring and let's look at the effort. You see when I try to rotate it, I apply quite low torque, but it's uh, capable of detecting it. Also, you can set different names for each actuator and set different family for each actuator. The name, it could be, for example, base, shoulder or elbow. And the family, it could be like robot arm or robot leg. This would be very useful when you have a lot of actuators at the same network. Another very nice feature is that for this actuator, there is different APIs. I tried Python one and it's very easy to use. So on the GitHub, you can find all these examples and you can go from the example 0.1 to the example 0.7 and they kind of increase the difficulty with each example. And I think these examples is the best place to start in order to write your own program. Let's try some of them. Of course, you can comment the position. And it gives you this nice graph. Another nice feature is that these actuators, they have IMU sensor inside. So you can measure the position and orientation of this actuator. 
And for this, we can use API. Let's run this Python program. And so if we move our actuator, we see this on this graph. And we can use this IMU sensor in order to do some fun stuff. For example, I just wrote a small program. And with this small program, we can do this. And this was surprisingly easy to make. This is cool. And the same program we can use to look at the IMU of the mobile application. We just need to put the right family name and module name. And as you can see with the same program, we can look at the orientation of the iPad, iPhone, uh, smartphone or whatever you use. And you can also do this. And of course, you can make a program to do this. And of course, this very sensitive torque measurements we can use for the collision detection. Test with an egg. And it's not broken at all. And this black actuator looks a little bit different, so it's bigger. It has this plastic part. And why all of this? Because it's waterproof. So this is perfect for the industrial environment. And so I installed this actuator on this base because we would like to make a robot arm out of this actuator and out of these pieces. And it's done. I ran out of screws, so I need to find a couple of screws uh, for here. But uh, essentially everything is done, uh, the assembly and the wiring. And it was surprisingly easy to make a program to control with the heavy robotics uh, mobile application this arm. Let me show you. Nice. Cool! I have not done the torque measurements for these actuators because uh, this company, Heavy Robotics, it's a well-known company and I don't see any point not to trust their specifications. Now let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of this system. So, three disadvantages. First, it's quite pricey. Second, it has quite big backlash. And I don't like the sound of these actuators. But this is because these actuators, they have super high reduction ratio. So in these actuators, there is a reduction ratio from 200 to 1500. It's like huge, enormous reduction ratio. And now let's talk about three advantages, three main advantages. First of all, these actuators, they have really high sensitivity for the torque measurements. And this is perfect for the collision detection. And also they have the encoder on the output shaft like this, they can partially compensate for the backlash. The second advantage is that this system is like a Lego. You can build whatever you want out of this system. There is the links, actuators, these brackets, and uh, you can build like 
legged robot, you can build a robot arm, you can build whatever you want. And the third main advantage is that it's super easy to program robot with these actuators, with these systems. And this is because they have a really good API, which is super simple to understand. And there are a lot of examples and you can follow these examples and see what to do, how to do, etc. So I think in the most cases, you don't even need to write the program from the scratch. You can take one or several examples, combine them and get whatever you want. So my overall conclusion, this system is perfect for the fast prototyping. I think if you want to build something super fast and you don't want to spend much time for the programming, this is a perfect solution for this. Thank you for watching my video till the end. Don't forget to put the like to this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to put one or several comments. Huge thank you to my patrons. Here are their names. And if you would like to become my patron or if you would like to support me via PayPal, all the links in the description to this video. And by the way, some of my patrons, they have the access to all STL files, so all the stuff which I 3D print, all my robots, actuators, etc. Stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time! Nice.